I wondered if you could tell me um, how the idea of feet, is it is that pronounced correctly? Right. It's actually fight, fight just like uh, fighting for something. <laughs> That's very appropriate. Um, how it came about and how it serves female entrepreneurs. Yeah, well, the, the word fight actually stands for um, financial independence through entrepreneurship. And it kind of came about because our industry, well, I suppose, first of all, I am a female entrepreneur. Yes. Um, I believe strongly in the fact that if women um, are not financially independent, they really don't have their full empowerment. I believe yes. it's critically important. Yes. And also because in the professional skincare industry, 98% of all skin therapists are women. And our industry puts more women into their own business than any other industry in the world. Wow, that's brilliant. I know, it's kind of, it's a, it's a huge social and economic kind of powerhouse for women. And so we wanted to do kind of a, a global initiative that would be very authentic to our DNA, if you want. Yep. So it would definitely be centered around women, it would be centered around entrepreneurship. And because we had experienced such a lot of success with Dermalogica, and we're in over 86 countries now, we wanted to do something that would help women in other industries, completely uh, potentially unrelated to the, to the skincare industry, also experience that degree of financial success. And so we wanted to focus on empowering 25,000 women into their own businesses wow. through microloans. And so in, wow. a, in, a, in a nutshell, in a very brief kind of few sentences, that was yeah. inspired fight. And we partnered with Kiva, which is one of the largest microlending companies in the world, also a non-profit, as is Fight, yes. um, to just put as many women into their own financial independence as we could. Fantastic, so inspiring. I've, and I've been a great admirer of Kiva for many years and they've done amazing work as well. Okay. I've been an avid Dermalogica fan for years and I noted last time I bought some eye cream that I got to contribute to Fight by entering the code online. Wow, that was great. That was thrilling to see that I didn't have any extra cost but that looking after myself also contributed to the well-being of other women's businesses. Could you explain how the model works? Yes, basically Dermalogica, we funded the initial um, funding for the loans to be granted through Kiva, uh, at our partnership with them, on the FIGHT website. And we right. wanted to make it as simple as possible and we also wanted to make it as engaging as possible for the end user, the consumer that uses Dermalogica. Yep. So I already said that 98% of skin therapists are women and 92% of all our clients are women. Right. So it's women that really drive Dermalogica's success. And we earmarked five of our top selling products, including Daily Microfoliant, which is our number one selling product. Right. And we decided that we would sleeve them in a special cardboard sleeve over the carton. Yes. It has a perforated edge. And when you open it, there's a code number and a story about a female entrepreneur and you, the consumer, go on to the joinfight.org website. Yeah. You enter the code number that's on the product that you already purchased. Yes. The, the loan has been funded by Dermalogica already. Right. What you're asked to do by entering that code is basically direct the loan. You are asked who you would like that portion of the loan that's attached to that product, mm. who would you like to receive it? So you choose by area of the of the world, by country, yes, um, by the type of industry, and then the greatest, for me, the coolest thing is you're sent an email that tells you about your female entrepreneur, wherever she might be, what yes. her story is, you'll watch her loan become fully funded, and then once it's fully funded, you will watch her grow her business. So, it's a brilliant idea, isn't it? <laughs> I, we're very excited about it because Fight has actually become now a platform that we've invited other companies to join us on. Oh, and, that's marvellous. And helping them figure out what makes sense for them to do. How do they want to do it? We've done it by coding products. Yes. They might do it by deciding a certain percentage of, um, of sales in a given month or yes. so whatever it might be. Um, we have an open platform on Fight and we have a number of other corporations and individuals who are also coming on board to, to fight with us. That's great. So it's spreading virally. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've been in different businesses most of my adult life and the first time I encountered how difficult it can be for women to source funding was when my marriage finished about 28 years ago and I tried to get a credit card in Australia. I was considered a bad risk because I'd been left with three small children and was working for myself. Needless to say, I was turned down by the bank. Women certainly can be marginalised as regards funding and there is the other side of things that people have talked about in my interviews that women don't like to ask for money. I can identify with this. Do you have any suggestions to antidote this issue for us? I think it's a, a, a common problem and I think mm. it, and it's, it's also a mis, misperception because women actually are very good loan risks. We yes. don't pay back loans. Kiva generally lend uh, well over 83% of their microloans to women and they have close to a 99% repayment rate. Wow. Yeah, so it's a myth that women are bad credit risks. Exactly. However, I think that we do ourselves quite often a disservice in the fact that we don't establish our own credit history and our own credit record independently, especially when we're married. Yes. And so my advice to, to my two daughters, I have two daughters who are yes. 17 and 12, and yeah. the advice my mother gave to myself and my three sisters is yes. own your own bank account in your own name yes. and make sure that you are building up a relationship with your financial institution independent of your husband or your partner. Very good. So we, my own relationship, I've been married for 20 years and my husband and I each um, have our own bank accounts. We yes. have a joint bank account that we both contribute to and expenses are paid out of that. Yes. But own your own bank account, establish your own credit rating, open store credit accounts, even if you don't want to have a credit you know, amount that you pay off. Yes. Even if you buy a couple of pairs of tights and you pay them off straight away, you're establishing a credit history. Very then good. When you go to apply for a loan or a small business loan, for example, you already have a credit score in your own name, and that's critical. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Also, many years ago in Melbourne, I participated in a small business course for women, and the trainer highlighted how wonderful women can be as business owners. We have all this experience raising families, balancing budgets, and juggling so many balls in the air. You're obviously passionate about women in business. Could you tell me why this is so dear to your heart? I love the expression. It's not unusual that I've heard it. Women uh, can be quite, you know, wonderful in business. It, it, I mean, it's kind of condescending, isn't it? As if we're sort of, yes. somehow, you know, wow, you're, like, you're quite smart for a girl. <laughs> Uh, very good. My other favorite question is I get asked sometimes when I'll do a panel, for example, do yeah. you think that business does enough to accommodate women? Which is like my favorite thing, like we're some kind of a liability yeah. that needs to be accommodated. I think that um, I think a, a, a critical issue for, for women in business, and it, it comes back to something that we spoke of a couple of minutes ago when you asked, you talked about women not liking to ask for money. Yes. And I think that uh, I like to rephrase it as far as money and call it funding because I think funding immediately takes it onto a business platform. Yes, it takes away the emotion. That's very good. Correct. Point. So yeah. if money, if it feels hard for, for us, for anybody, whether you're a man or a woman, call it funding because it's quite, mm. you'll quite, you'll quite often find that men call it funding rather than um, money. <laughs> <laughs> so That's a really anyway. good point. Thank you. I think that, um, I think that as far as operating and owning a business, the, 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 the benchmark for me about having women included, why it's critical, is it doesn't make sense to exclude 50% of your talent pool in any business, yes. in any country or in, on any planet. Yes. You own a company and, uh, and I own a company, we employ over 1,600 people and I would say about 70% of our workforce at Dermalogica Corporate are women. Um, but even if, in, in any regard, it doesn't make sense to, to exclude 50% of the talent pool, which is what women are on the planet. Yes. And to have women included at a conversation around the table, as well as men, you have a, a much more balanced approach to business. It's critically important. And when I see a business table or a, or a conference table with only men around the table, it's not diverse and it's not balanced. And if I see it with just women around the table, it's also not diverse or balanced. We need both voices. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. Obviously, Dermalogica is an extremely successful international business. Do you have any stories about the early days and how you overcame challenges that might inspire other female entrepreneurs? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I... <laughs> uh, Dermalogica is 25 years old this year in 2011. Wow. So certainly there were a lot of challenges, especially in the early days. Yes. And I think for me as an entrepreneur, and it's probably different if one works for a, you know, a corporation, but I think as an entrepreneur and as a woman, the critical thing is to, to, to look at your industry, look at a business uh, that you know you're pretty savvy about the area that you're going to start your business in. Yes. Um, I was very savvy in professional skincare. It's all I've ever done. Mm. I, I can't imagine starting a business in an industry that I knew nothing about. Yes. So sometimes people will say to me, do I think it's a good opportunity to in, in you know, um, in hotels, in guest houses. I don't mm. know anything about it. So I say, mm. I don't know. I mean, I've stayed in them, but I don't know anything about the industry. Be mm. savvy about your industry, number one. Okay. I think, uh, number two, um, be passionate and committed to what you're going to pursue. Because in the early days, um, we didn't draw any salaries out of Domologica for three years. Right. So what happened was I was I started Domologica with my then boyfriend, who's now my husband. Mm. Um, he had a job as a sales rep. We lived on $1,000 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. We put everything else from Dermalogica, from the International Dermal Institute, which was our training business, back into the business for three years. No salaries came out. Yes. We piled everything back in, and we lived very frugally. Yes. So be prepared to live frugally, and if you can't do that after month five, you're probably not going to see the success of your endeavor. Yes, I agree. And stay focused on what your game plan is. Don't get distracted by the next new fun idea. Stay yes. focused on what you're meant to be doing and be determined to drive it home. Very good. That's really great advice. I've had feedback that some of the issues that hold female entrepreneurs back from success is that some of us don't have confidence in ourselves and don't take enough risks and don't shoot for a big enough vision. Do you have any feedback about what you have observed and any tips that would support us in changing some of these challenges? Yeah, I think one of the one of the biggest uh, myths, um, and, and I think it's changing now with with new, younger women coming into into industry. But I think one of the greatest myths is that in order to be successful, a woman had to behave more like a man. Yes, <laughs> and it's a complete mistake because mm. in order to be successful, you have to be at your most what I call fierce with your own reality. You have to be completely Lovely. authentic to who you are. Yes. And the minute we start operating thinking, I can be successful if I'm more like this person, Yes. you're already second best because you're never going to be that person. Yes. So Oscar Wilde had, a, uh, had an expression that be yourself because everybody else is taken. You've got to love the Irish, yep. <laughs> and I think that you have to just, you know, your authenticity as a woman is that you are a woman. Make no yes. apologies for it. Take no yes. business with it. Don't try and behave in, in a way that you think is, is more um, obviously going to make you successful. Be yes. yourself. And if, yes. and if you have a, a feeling, I call it, for example, operating on intuition, I make no apologies when I do that because yes. it's a very powerful tool for me. Yes. Do men have that same level of intuition? Yes, but I don't believe they act on it. We should right. act on it. So right. be yourself, be authentic to who you are, and don't feel that uh, you have to operate as someone else in order to be successful. It's simple, but I totally agree with you. Thank you so much. Thank you again for your time today. I really, really do appreciate it. And fantastic points that you've, you've raised. I really, really, really do um, think that that could help a lot of us. Thank you so much again, Jane. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the opportunity.